Okay. People can hear me? Right? Okay. Great. Um, thank you for uh, attending the session during the lunch break because it's qu quite hard. And I know probably a lot of people have are hungry. Um, my name is uh, Kun Ayers. I, uh, I, I, I work for Red Hat and JBoss for a long time already. I joined in 2004. So um, uh, I come from Belgium, Antwerp. So that's the, the DevOps capital, right? And uh, I've been mostly involved in the tools, uh, work on the tool side. First uh, on uh, the JBPM project, doing the JBPM uh, graphical editor. And then two years ago, I switched to, uh, to support for Forge and also recently I do a bit of Hibernate tools. Great. So today we're here uh, to talk about Forge. Uh, how many of you guys do know Forge already? Okay. Quite, well, let's say one third. Okay. Um, Forge started out as a, pro, as a project that had to be a replacement for a, a tool called SeamGen. Um, SeamGen is a tool that, that um, the purpose of which was to get you going very quickly with a, uh, with a Seam application. Um, but as we were developing Forge, it turned out that we could do a, a heck of a lot more than just uh, a Seam Gen replacement for a Seam Gen re replacement for uh, Java EE, I should say. Um, the, one of the problems with Java EE is that if you, need, if you are a newbie and you need to get started, it's very, very uh, difficult. And uh, you can see this on this uh, slide here. Uh, this, this is taken like probably a year ago from uh, the Oracle website of the Java EE page from, from the Oracle website. And it shows you a lot of boxes. And all these boxes are frameworks, right? Are standards, you know, frameworks that represent a standard, one or another standard. So how the hell, if you're a newbie, are you going to get started with this if you see a picture like that? Uh, it's really daunting, right? Because first of all, you need to, to learn all these different boxes, what they are, what they, which, which purpose they serve, and how you, how you would set it up. There is also a lot of gotchas, you know, when you, for instance, use JMS, you need to, or you use CDI, for instance, you need to know that, oh yeah, you, you need to put the beans.xml file in the meta in the folder, otherwise it doesn't work, right? So that kind of stuff. There is a lot of details that you need to know about. And then moreover, you need to, to integrate all these boxes. They have to work together somehow because you want to use CDI and JSF, right? So getting started with, with this type of technology is really painful. And uh, Forge is a, a project that is built to really help you doing that. I'm talking here exclusively about Java EE, but it, it's not limited to that. You could, you could also go to other types of technologies that are, don't have anything to do with Java EE. You saw earlier an example of Arai. Okay. Um, now, Forge works, the, the principle is that you have a, a command, a CLI driven tool, command line tool, in which you start with a really small, simple project, and you will add all these technologies that you would need in your project one by one. So command line driven, why? Well, real programmers, they use command line tools, right? Yeah, they like to tap, type fast, clicking that is for, for, yeah, not for programmers. Uh, they use tab completion to, to see what, which, which uh, commands are available or, you know, to just type, type two, to the two first letters and then a tab and, and you, you, can, you, you have your command there. And you, moreover, you can script, you can write scripts in the command, in a com command line tool, right? So that is the reason why uh, Forge started out as a command line tool. But of course, uh, some people really do love their IDE because it has, 
even though you might not like to, to even though you might like to, to do command line tools, uh, an IDE can be really interesting because you have incremental builds, for instance. Um, workspace navigation, right? You, you, um, you have outline view where you can quickly s click on something and you navigate to, uh, to, to the, the place on your file where you want to be. Debugging, not, not, uh, not to mention. You know, if you, if you have a, a nice environment, a nice IDE, and you can step through code with your debugger, you can learn a lot or you can find bugs quite easily. And also more advanced stuff like form-based editing, which you don't like if you don't like clicking anyway. So uh, my job has been the, f the past few uh, years uh, to, uh, to integrate this command line tool in, uh, in, in, in Eclipse, in, Java, in Java, JBoss Development Studio. And that's what I will, uh, will show you. Because most of this presentation will be a, a live coding uh, demo, right? So um, yeah, let's, let's just start right away. Um, what you see here is um, JBoss Development Studio. How many people have used or are using De JBoss Development Studio? OK, that's good. So most of you know what this is. Um, I have changed the layout a little bit to, uh, to keep you awake. Um, but um, you can see that there is a, a section here, uh, a console, uh, in which there is uh, JBoss EAP. So this is JBDS with JBoss EAP. GBOS EAP is running there. Um, I have the Forge console view open, which is here on top, uh, situated in the workspace for, the, for this time. And for the rest, this, this, uh, this is a, like an empty uh, instance of JBDS, empty workspace. Good. So how I, I told you that it, the purpose of Forge is to start with a very simple project. And I will just show it to you. So you can type two, two letters, for instance, and then uh, tab completes the command, and it says new project. Um, I don't know what to type now, so I can tab once more, and it says, oh, I need a name for this project. And I will um, call it the project conference. Let's say the purpose of, of the, the coding session would be to, to make, make a little JSF application in which I create entity, one or two entities, that uh, can be stored in a database um, using a JSF front end, right? Yeah, quite daunting, right? No? I mean, how, how would you start with such a task if you don't know anything? You know, you would just open your browser, go to Google, and you know, look for JSF help or something like that. Anyway, so I will call the project conference and Forge starts to ask me a few questions. It says, where do you want me to put this project? So I'm just, for now, I'm just going to accept the defaults. It's just one subfolder in, in, the, in the workspace here. Uh, and then it, it creates this project. And as you can see, it has imported it immediately in the Project Explorer. So this is the, the, one of the examples of the integration of, uh, of the command line tool and, and, the, and the IDE. Okay, so it, what it, does it do? It creates. It just creates a, a simple project that is Mavenized, ma a Maven-enabled project with a POM file. You know, look at the POM file. There's nothing special in there. Yeah, it's, it's just basically an empty, empty project. There is no, uh, no packages. Well, there is a default package, but nothing more than that. And that's it, right? So. I told you that we were going to create this project with entities that are stored in a database. So we need to somehow set up persistence for this project. Yeah? JPA, right? one of those boxes that I showed earlier. How would we do that? Well, hopefully there will be a persistence command right? that will help me there. So I type P, E, for instance. Oh, there it is, persistence. I don't know what to specify next, so I, I just type uh, tab complete, setup, provider. OK, I need a provider, apparently. What is that? Tap again. Oh, it supports a number of persistent JPA providers for me uh, here out of the box. 
So I can choose hibernate, right? Tap again, container. Oh, I need to specify my, 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 uh, my uh, container. Um, tap again. OK, here I have uh, also the choice between a number of different containers. I will use EAP since that is the one is running, that is running here. JBoss EAP. Yeah, and then I could tap further and have more details, but I, w I won't do it. So this is what basically what I need. It will, um, when I ta tap enter, it will basically ask me another question because it doesn't have enough information. It says, hey, I have all these uh, Java EE uh, versions here. Which one do you want, right? So I'm just going to accept defaults for now. Now it asks me if I want to use the JPA uh, to meta -model, meta model generator. I'm just going to accept the default, no. There, Hibernate has extended APIs. I don't want to use this because it's just a pure JPA project. And then it says, hey, persistence is installed. Uh, it cranks out a number of files, and that's it. And it has opened, in the meantime, it has opened the persistence.xml file in uh, an editor. So you can see yeah, it, it creates a default data source, or it uses a default data source for, uh, for EAP, and so on. OK, so now persistence is installed, right? If I would go to the POM file, then there are probably a few changes here, you see? So it has automatically added the correct uh, dependencies, the ma correct Maven dependencies. And now I can start um, creating an entity, right? I have an entity command, and I will name my entity conference. Right, let's first do something else. I, so I, I have set up JPA. Um, I was telling you that I want to do a JSF application that uses entities. So let's first set up this JSF thing. Um, I want to, basically I want to create from my entities. I want to cre I will want to create uh, user interfaces by generating them, right? By scaffolding them. So there is a command in. Um, in Forge called scaffold. So, but first we have to set it up. Right? And it's a pattern that you will, you will see more over and over again. Like all these boxes that you remember, the first step that you do is set it up, set up the technology, right? So the first question that uh, uh, is asked is, well, I d didn't um, select a scaffold type yet. Which one do you want? And I want indeed JSF, Java Server Faces. So I'm going to accept this default. Java server faces is provided by a scaffold provider. In this case, it's called faces. This needs to be installed. I'm going to install it. The next question is, oh, your current target is a jar uh, packaging, right? But we're going to switch to a web application, to a JSF web application. So it will become a war application, yeah? a war uh, target. Are you OK with that? Yes. All right. It installs a number of uh, number of things there. They are called facets, by the way, on my project. And then it asks one more question. It says, in which subdirectory of web root do you want your application? So I'm going to accept the default, which is the root. And cranks out a number of files. And the interesting thing here that you see is that it changes the layout of my of my project there, because because of the, the change in the POM file, the target has become war, the target packaging. Uh, Eclipse notices this, and, he, and Eclipse will just change the layout of my project into a web, a web uh, project layout, OK? So and the cool thing now is that we can just deploy this, right? So let's just drag and drop this onto the server. I go to a browser. Localhost 8080 conference. And there we are. Our application is deployed, right? Of course, there is nothing there. It's just it's just a structure, yeah. So we cannot really do anything fruitful. So to do that, let's just create an entity. Entity named conference. Okay. 
Well, it asks me in what, in what package do you want this entity created. I'm just going to accept the default again. Creates the entity, opens the class file uh, in an in a editor, right? So I can directly start editing or seeing, see what happens. Um, entities have fields, right? So I'm going to add a number of fields here. There is a field command available. Yeah, the field has a number of uh, possibilities. So let's say that uh, conferences have uh, a name, right? So if I add this name, immediately the name will be added in the class file and the focus will be uh, put on this newly added field, right? Let's add another field. So in, this is also interesting. This is like uh, up arrow up, right? Is the previous command. This works. So arrow up, and there is the previous command. I'm going to change this in description. Right? Okay. I have the description description added now. And let's now scaffold the user interface. How do we do that? Scaffold from entity. Well, that's it. Okay. There is a number of files that exist. It generates over here in the deployed resources, it will generate uh, facelets, right, for the conference, uh, for the conference um, entity. And we can just redeploy it. So we go here, we say full publish. Wait until the server is uh, doing something. Okay, we go back to the browser, refresh, and there is a, there is a button that um, appears here. If I click on it, I have a screen that is, that is created, and I can, for instance, uh, create a conference called DevConf, right, with description, awesome conference in Brno. Create, save, right, there it is. Second one, DevOx. Awesome conference in Antwerp. Create new, save, there it is. You can go back and edit it, right? Even more awesome conference, save. You all, there it is. So we have like a fully functional user interface just like that, right? Awesome, isn't it? Okay, so what, what is more is, you know, I did now, I, I, I said, okay, I'm going to do JSF. Well, let's say I want to do REST. I want to, I want to have a REST endpoint. Very simple. REST setup, okay? Which root path? Okay, the default. There it is. You see, my layout has changed again. Has added the uh, REST web services. REST uh, endpoint from entity. All right, there it is. Go here. In our Java resources, there is a package called REST, and we have the conference endpoint that is created for us, right? Redeploy it. Full publish. Go back to the browser. Of course, each time I, I redeploy my application because my persistent setting or create drop, my database is, is, you know, is emptied, so I need to recreate something here, DevOx or DevConf. Awesome conference in Brno. Create new, save. There it is. And now, yeah, how can we test this? This uh, that's that's also interesting. How can we test this uh, this uh, REST web services? You know, you could just you ha don't have to go out of uh, your JBoss development studio. You can just here uh, use the get endpoint. Say run on server. Okay, finish. It opens up a yeah. It might not be obvious, but it opens up a new uh, view there, web service tester. Like if I click here on run, right, 
see it will just send the, the request to the server and, 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 and show me the answer, right? Interesting. How many of you did notice? Nobody? All right. Great. Um, so um, that was it. That was uh, about uh, REST and, uh, and, and a JSF application. Of course, we probably would like a, a, another entity so we could create another one called session, right? Let's say that a session has also a field uh, called name, and that um, a session has also a field. It has a relationship with, uh, with conferences, right? Every conference can have multiple sessions, so there is a, a many-to-one relationship um, named conference uh, field type. Yeah, you see, I just tab and it, it just suggests. You know, yeah, there is a, a model package. So okay, let's take model, and then the conference, right? And I need to also provide the inverse field name, which would be sessions. So in in the conference uh, entity, there will be an additional field, sessions, that will hold the reference to all the sessions that are part of the conference, okay? Right? So it has created this, this session uh, class. And now I need to re-scaffold my user interface. And I can do it, actually, I can scaffold both of them at, in one go, uh, going back to the conference project and say scaffold from entity, and then use a wildcard. Of course, this is something you need to know. It means all the, uh, use all the Java classes that are, that are in the model uh, package. And I'm going to overwrite files that might already be there. Right. Generates the UI. Redeploy. And All right, you see, two, now there's two buttons there, right? So I can create a new conference uh, uh, called DevConf, which is the awesome conference in Brno. I'm going to create it, and then I have opportunity to add sessions there, like Forge, a Forge session, and an Archillion session. All right, save it. And then, you know, I can just navigate around in, in, this, in this user interface, right? Great, right? Okay, now, so um, that was cool. So we have had our cake and we have eaten it. Um, now, there is one more thing that, that you could say, hey, what if um, something is not supported here? Yeah, because I'm typing persistence and field and whatever. So it, it must come from somewhere. Uh, it must be put there by somebody. What if the, the, the box that I want to support is not included in, in Forge, right? So we, yeah, let's recapitulate. We created a web app. And that's also important um, to, to mention. Forge did not use not leave any junk in my, in my project. So there is no proprietary stuff. There's no Forge-related files that are in that project. It's just a simple Maven project to which Forge will add stuff. It will just analyze what is there already and add stuff without adding any metadata or other crap that might um, uh, disrupt your, your development, right? But of course, uh, if we want to do something else, um, that is not supported, yeah? For instance, testing, right? Yeah, there, there has been an Archelian talk earlier. Uh, yeah, we need to test our stuff, yeah? So let's say that we want to do Archelian, right? We want to do Archelian, we want to use Forge for, you know, we want to use Forge to do Archelian. Well, so, the logical reaction would be to go to this um, 
to this console and start typing, right? A R. Oh, it's there. <laughs> okay. This is not good because I wanted to prove a point here. Anyway, um, let's say I want to do Hibernate tools, right? So Hibernate, yeah, it doesn't, or, or you know, generate entities or, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know how can I, can, I, can I find out what is supported and, you know, if I can get additional extensions that might, uh, that might um, help me with uh, setting up, for instance, Archelion. Right. One of the things is, you can, so every command that I type is actually contributed to Forge by a so-called plugin, right? So there is a number of plugins that are available out of the box, but it's also possible to create your own plugins and add, and add them to the, to the Forge system, right? So one of the commands that you can, you can use to, uh, um, to look at that is list plugins, yeah? And as you can see, I have one, of course, I have one plugin installed, uh, the Archelian plugin. But for now, I, I will just remove it for the heck of it. So I remove this plugin. Yeah, and now when I'm here and I want to type Archelian, oh, A R, it doesn't work anymore, right? The plugin has been, has been disabled. So if you want to support Archelian, you can, you can issue the fort, and you don't even know what the plugin would be called, right, or how to install it, you would be able to issue the command forge find plugin. And if you type a star there, then it will go out on the internet. There is a, uh, on GitHub, there is a YAML file that lists all the uh, supported plugins. So if you have your, a plugin of yourself that you want to support, you can just, with a simple pull request, add it to that YAML file and, 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 and have it available for everybody, right? So this is a list of all the plugins that are there available, right? So and as you can see, the first one starts with an A. Uh, a, a, a Dutch uh, contributor called Paul Becker has, uh, has written a, uh, an Archelian plugin, right? So we can just use that provided we install it, and installing it is also very simple. We issue the forge install plugin command, and we use the name that was listed there, Archelian. What will happen is it goes out to GitHub, checks out all the code um, related to that plugin, builds it locally, and then installs and enables the project, the, the product, uh, the, the plugin, sorry, okay? So now, this Archelian plugin has been set up, has been enabled again. Right, let's just use it. Okay, we can, we have to set up Archelian again. And I need to, to specify my container, that my target container that I want to use. And the JBoss EAP is not listed there, but I can use uh, JBoss, um, uh, the, you have a question? That's a, a good question. I think to um, to be able to make sure that it it um, it works with the locally installed Forge uh, APIs. So if if you would check out a, a plugin that is a uh, is not compatible anymore with with the locally installed one, then it would just fail. It would just refuse to build. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So here. Um, I, I, I want to set up this container. JBoss EAP is not listed, but I can just use the JBoss AS7 uh, one because it's the same. Uh, it has the same uh, characteristics. So I want to I want to use a, a remote container, meaning that Archelian assumes that uh, the the container is started and stopped uh, outside of uh, of the Archelian test, which is the case here because my server is just running, right? So JBoss AS remotes. 7x, okay. All right. It asks me which uh, which Archelian uh, version I want to use. I'm just going to go with the default. JUnit also the default, and then the container here. I have to use the 711 because uh, JBoss AS 711 is the the one that uh, relates to the JBoss EAP6 uh, um, server. So I need to specify the number 15. 
and then it will write out an Archelian XML file, change the POM, and, and so on, right? So now Archelian is enabled on my project, and I can start creating a test. So let's, let's do that. Archelian, create test, class, com, example, conference, which class? Well, let's create a test for the, for the, um, for the rest endpoint, right? Okay, there it is. Enter, and now we can go and look there. Let's um, let's close these files here. Conference endpoint, and in the test folder, there is there is a test that has been created, right? So let's try and run it. Let's try and run this test. Now we will encounter a few difficulties here. Um, so you would just be able to run as a JUnit test. And here you can see there is a problem. What is the problem? Well, there is no deployable container on my class path. What does that mean? It means that actually Maven, um, that there is a, there, I should enable a Maven profile on, in, my, in my Eclipse project that includes this deployable container in the class path. And it's a very common, common error that you will get if you want to try, to try and run Archelian tests in, a, in Eclipse. But the, the thing is, so this is a flaw in, in the work I do because actually the Archelian setup yeah, should actually enable this, uh, this Maven profile automatically in the Eclipse world, right? I don't know if, uh, if I'm clear, but in, so if, you go, if I go to my, the properties of my project, so there is a number of Maven, uh, Maven uh, properties there, and one of the, on the main page you have active Maven profiles, right? So I need to specify this, and the active Maven uh, profile that I need to specify, I can find it in my POM file. If I navigate to the bottom here, you see there is a profile called JBoss AS Remote 7X, which is the one I added when I set up Archelian, right? Because that's the one I had to specify that contains this, uh, this deployable container, right? So what I do is I just, uh, I will just copy the ID of this profile and put it into these Maven properties Right, apply, update configuration, okay. And now uh, let's try and, and run the test again. Of course, <laughs> it would be very, uh, yeah, you can see there's already something that happens, right? Because there was a deployment happening on my, in, my, in my server, but uh, it, it would be too, uh, too optimistic to, 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 to hope that it would directly directly um, pass the test, right? So it doesn't pass. Why doesn't it pass? Because there is a number of things that are, are not available. So there is a, a node class def found error on the class conference. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, if I go to this test, you can see that the, the thing that gets deployed on the server to run the test, the test.jar that, that is deployed on the server, it contains one class, the conference endpoint class, and one manifest resource, the beans.xml file. So this is what you call a micro deployment containing one class, the class under test, plus a beans.xml file that, uh, that makes this jar file uh, a bean, uh, a CDI beans uh, enabled um, jar, right? So of course the conference endpoint class references the conference uh, class and also the session class, right? Because if I navigate into this thing, I, I see that there, you know, the conference class is used in my REST endpoint. So if this conference class is not available, then of course the, 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 the class loader will not be able to load the, the conference endpoint class. Also the conference class uses the session class. Uh, where is it? Here, yeah? So what I need to do is in my 
in my, uh, while creating the deployment, I need to add those classes. So if you attended the, the, the Archelian talk, there is now a way to do it with, uh, with Resolver, shrink wrap Resolver, and it will automatically resolve the stuff that is needed, right? But for now, let's just add these classes manually. Conference class. Session. Class. Yeah, let's try and run the test again. Ah, again a problem. What is the problem now? Well, um, can't find a persistence unit named null in. So, of course, I'm testing a REST endpoint that will try to, uh, try to, um, to, to persist stuff, maybe. So I need, I need my persistence, uh, my, my, I need JPA enabled, basically, on this deployment, right? So this is um, one more thing that we need to add here. It's add as manifest resource. Yeah, so and I will add, if you uh, look here on this, um, uh, in my project, I have in my test resources, uh, no, sorry, in my main resources of, uh, there it is, I have a persistence.xml file. Remember, that's the one that we added, you know, in the beginning of the presentation to enable JPA. I can just, re just reuse that. So I can add as manifest the file that is called meta-inf. slash persistence of XML and the, in, the man, in my, in my um, micro deployment this file will be called uh, persistence oh. it's not very uh, handy to stand up writing code okay so this, basically this line that I add is just to take the, the manifest file that is in my main resources and use that one in my uh, micro deployment that is created, right? All right, so now let's cross our fingers because the, fault, the previous errors I expected, but if it goes wrong now, then I have another problem. Green bar, all right. <laughs> so um, yeah, so basically what is tested is, is this thing. Yeah, I have a, a cert null on the uh, a cert not null on the on the conference endpoint that was injected here uh, in in my test class. Of course, that's not a very interesting test. We could write something more interesting. You know, for instance, um, have a test for the create method of my my endpoint. Right. So there is a um, where is it here? There's a create method. Yeah that persists an entity that has been created. So I could just do that by test create, um, have uh, create a conference, new conference. And then I can have an assert I know that the conference ID is null, right? Because I, I didn't add anything there, right? Okay. And then if I use this endpoint, conference endpoint, oh, create conference, I know that this, in, this endpoint will persist my conference, and while persisting it, the database will generate an ID and, and set the ID for it. Yeah? So after doing that, I will have assert, assert not null, conference get ID. Okay, All right, let's run it again. Yep, green bar. So it works. So, and you can see, if you uh, haven't seen it before, you can just see here in the log of the server all the things that happen, right? So it, it creates a conference, 
uh, it, cre it creates the tables, it deploys uh, the, the the test you know the test jar, right? Uh, all these things are visible there. You could even just debug it, right? Debug this test. Uh, I only have five minutes, so I don't know if it's possible to do it. But let's say let's say that we have um, we put a breakpoint there, and we say. Um, Debug. Um, I'm not sure if this will work because the service started not in debug mode. No, it doesn't work. Anyway, um, that was uh, you know, just to show you how to use uh, a, a technology that that um, that is not provided out of the box by uh, by Forge. Um, so we use plugins, right? Um, what is a plugin? Well, I invite you to come tomorrow to, uh, to my plugin writing uh, lab, because there we will develop hands-on. Uh, I will show you hands-on how to develop such a plugin for Forge. Um, the conclusion is that uh, Forge gets you started quickly, takes care of all the gotchas in, uh, in, in setting up complicated environments like uh, Java EE. You will add and activate plugins, uh, technolo these technologies by using plugins, and Forge will uh, enable you to uh, to take a distance, and 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 it will take care of the details while you, com you you will keep the overview of your entire project without being lost in all kinds of messy details. Great. So there is, as I told you, there is some more forging. Today uh, I have a, a, a lightning talk where I will basically show you how to use Forge to, um, to reverse engineer a database, uh, scaffold a web application around this, uh, the, the, the entities that are created from that database and deploy, and that's the hard part, deploy that, uh, that, um, ap that application to OpenShift, right? So that's the thing where it can go, where it usually goes wrong. So that's today in room two, in room D2, here, uh, at 5.45. And then tomorrow, as I told you, at 10.40, in the Hackfest lab, uh, there is a hands-on plug-in writing lab. Right, any questions? Yeah. Uh, you showed us how to add, for example, fields into the entity. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure about fields actually, because I but but I, some stuff you can remove if if the plugin allows you has a command to uh, to uh, to remove stuff, then it will uh, you know as you saw the, the 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 you can add plugins, install plugins. You can also remove them. Uh, I'm not sure about the fields though. Yeah, but it's simple to add it. I mean, to to add that functionality to uh, to to uh, yeah. More questions. No. Okay. Thanks a lot for uh, <laughs> not not going to lunch. <laughs> Thank you.